In this lesson, we're going to look at graphing linear functions using the slope and the intercept method. Here again is a quick review of what the three different ways we can graph them are using table of values, using the x and y intercepts, or the slope intercept form, which we're looking at right now. This method works best when the equation is solved for y. So here we have a problem, y equals 2x plus 1. The slope intercept form of the equation, which we're going to use later on as well, is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So in this case, m equals 2. Now, slope always has to be rise over run. So in this case, I will get to change the 2 to 2 over 1, because if it's a whole number, you can always put it over 1. b is 1, and b is my y-intercept. So your y-intercept is always going to be written as a point. And the point for y-intercept is always x is 0, so 0, and then the 1, comma 1. Now, in this type of problem, how we're going to graph this, we always want to graph our point first. So we're going to graph 0, 1. So I'm going to go up 0 and put a one, point right at 1. Since it's my y-intercept, it'll always be on my y-axis. Now, the slope tells me where I go from that point. So from this point, I'm going to go up 2 and over 1, and I can put a point. Now, the nice thing about slope is it tells us we can continue that. It just basically tells me that from every point, I can go up 2 and over 1, and I can get another point from the same place. So from here, I can go up 2 and over 1. And I can actually do it again if I wanted to get a fourth point. So we have our four points. Now we can actually draw a line between them. You notice they're all on the same line because they have the same slope. Let's look at one more problem doing the exact same thing. In this occasion we have y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So we're still using the slope intercept form of the equation, which is y equals mx plus b. In this case, however, my slope, or m, is negative 1 half. So I have negative 1 as my rise, and run is 2. It was already as a fraction, so I didn't have to worry about changing it to a fraction. And b, again, is 1, so in this case it's 0, 1. So again, I'm going to put my point at my y-intercept, which is 0, 1. However, this time, instead of going up 2 and over 1 like I did in my last problem, I'm going to go down 1, because that's my rise, and then over 2 down 1 and over 2. If you always do your rise first, your rise is always going to tell you if you go up or down. If it's positive, you go up. If it's negative, you go down. And in that case, the run is always going to be to the right-hand side of the graph. So you don't have to try to figure out, okay, is my run positive or negative? You're always going to run to the right, even if the problem is negative, because you only put the negative sign in the first one, which in this case was the rise. If they were both negative, then we'd have two negatives, and that would equal positive, and I wouldn't have to worry about the negative at all. So, let's graph our line. And that's how you graph an equation using the slope-intercept form of an equation.